Hi, today's the day I've got to make the decision as to whether I'm going to carry on using OM Digital Solutions cameras or whether I'm going to swap over completely to Sony. This is the Sony A1 with the 200 to 600. This is the OM1 with the 150 to 400 mil lens. I've been using them both side by side now for about five weeks. It took a long time to get hold of an OM1 and testing out the autofocus. I ended up using Sony because Olympus were sort of in trouble or they were selling out and it wasn't clear whether they would carry on. Now it turns out they, they have, they've carried out under a different brand, OM Digital Solutions, but at one point I was looking at other cameras because I didn't know where they were going to carry on. So I looked at the Sony and its fantastic reputation for its autofocus and the blackout free viewfinder, that was the attraction. So I've been using that with my Olympus cameras for about 15 months. The autofocus is fantastic and I was really hoping when this OM1 came out, this new WOW camera, it was going to match it. So this is the sixth YouTube film I've made on this subject so far. Two of them I made before I actually got hold of an OM1 and then the next three were testing out the autofocus. So I've been doing that, now I have to decide. Which one is it going to be? The OM1 or the Sony A1? The OM1 or the Sony A1? Whichever I go for, I'm going to be very happy. They're both fantastic systems. There's not a lot in it. In fact, I'll tell you what we'll do. Heads, tails. Heads, tails. That's it, the decision is made. It's a shame though, I really wanted to keep the other one. Actually, I didn't make the decision by tossing a coin. I also didn't decide by sitting down and thinking about the pros and cons of both systems. What I did do was just let it evolve naturally. So for the first two weeks I was very proactive in finding places where I could photograph birds in flight and three of the YouTube films I've made, which I'll list in the description underneath this film, were talking about the autofocus, comparing the autofocus. I wanted to know if the OM-1 camera was in the same ballpark as the Sony A1. And that's not easy in the UK. You can't just go for a walk in the British countryside and photograph birds in flight. You've got to go somewhere specific to do it. So I've been doing that. They are in the same ballpark. They've got their advantages and disadvantages on the autofocus. And I cover that in the three films I'm talking about. But basically, I would say the Sony A1 has got marginally better autofocus. Once it locks onto a subject, it rarely lets go. It's amazing how it holds on. On the other hand, the OM1 camera, I feel, is slightly better at acquiring focus in the first place. It will pick up on a bird when it's still very small in the frame and start to track it. And also when a bird's in a hedgerow and against a hedgerow, it will find it, whereas the Sony struggles to find it sometimes. So they've both got the pluses and minuses. Now, the Olympus will actually drift off focus maybe one, two, or occasionally three frames in the middle of a sequence, it will lose the focus, but it will come back in again. Loses a couple of frames, recovers and, and, and locks on sharp as you're following a bird in flight. And since you get 50 frames per second versus about 27 frames per second I get from the Sony, therefore you actually end up with more in-focus pictures with the Olympus than you do with the Sony. So it depends on how you want to look at it. Also, I'm hoping it's the sort of problem they can fix with a firmware update sometime in the future. Important thing is they're in the same ballpark, as I would imagine is the Nikon Z9, the Canon R5, R6, R3. They'll, it's a new generation of autofocus and 2021 saw this huge leap forward and I, I expect they're all very similar. So what I did was I tested it for about two weeks and then I just started to alternate. One day I'd go out with the Sony and next day I'd go out with the Olympus. And that went on for a few days. And then I just let myself choose which camera did I fancy using that day. And I guess whichever camera I was finding the easiest to use was getting me the most results. That was the camera I started to pick up. And after a few days, I could definitely see there was a trend developing. There was one camera that I was going to first. 
it became my go-to camera. But let's backtrack a little bit. Let's go back to the first YouTube film that I made, which was just when they released the, the press release for the OM-1 camera. And I said in that film that there's only two things I was really interested in. That there should be no blackout in the viewfinder. And that was a given because it said that in the press release. It's not quite true because there is actually blackout if you come below 25 frames per second. In continuous focus at 25 frames per second and 50 frames per second, uh, then there's no blackout. But come slower and there is. But that's not a problem because I'm only really interested in no blackout when I'm following a bird in flight and I'm going to be doing that at 50 frames per second. So that's okay. It's got that. The second thing I said was I want the autofocus to be in the same ballpark as the Sony A1 and it is. So that's, that's good enough too. The only other thing I said in that film is I'm not concerned about image quality as far as I'm concerned any modern high-end camera is producing wonderful files today and I'm very very happy with Micro Four Third file sizes I know many of you disagree with that but that's my position on it I'm very very happy with the image quality that I'm going to get we'll just look at some of the other pros and cons between the two cameras these are less important to me but um, First of all, the biggest advantage of all of the Sony is the very large file sizes, 8,600 pixels. It means you can heavily crop your pictures and it's much easier to photograph a bird small in the frame when it's flying. It's much easier to follow it and then crop it retrospectively. So for the first time in my life, I've been cropping pictures. I've never cropped pictures before. I always wanted to get the bird right size in the frame to start with. But with the Sony, you can shoot small in the frame. I will miss that. That's probably its biggest biggest advantage. The other advantage is you get a, a, a more shallow depth of field, so a smoother backgrounds. It's not to say you can't get smooth backgrounds with the Micro Four Third system. You can, so long as your background is way over in the horizon, they'll both give you a diffuse background. But you have got about two stops more depth of field in effect, so when the background's a bit close, it does become a slight nuisance. It's nowhere near the problem that I expected it to be when I first tried Micro Four Third. And it does actually have the advantage that I'm shooting wide open all the time with that lens now. I very rarely close it down. I always said with my Canon equipment, I used to close it down. I was using Canon for more than 30 years. I used to shoot at f8 more than any other aperture. So I'm using the 500 f4 lens. I'm closing it down two stops. And that was really because if you're photographing a bird, you want the eye to be sharp, you focus on the eye, but if you want the wing here to be sharp as well, you need to close it down a little bit because there's very little depth of field when that kingfisher is close to you. You get more depth of field the further away the kingfisher is, but when it's close up, there's not a lot of depth of field there. So I used to close it down just to give me that a little bit more. And if a kingfisher turned its back to you, well now you need a lot of depth of field. You want the eye sharp, and the tip of the tail sharp, well I'd be closing down to f16 then. But because I get two stops more depth of field with the OM camera, I'm less inclined to ever close it down. I'm usually shooting wide open now. Advantages of the OM-1, well no dust. I don't get dust issues on the sensor anymore. When you're shooting video, it's a major nuisance. And with the Sony, I've been getting quite a lot of dust. I always used to with my Canon cameras, and um, I used to have them clean professionally every six months or so, and within a fortnight, I'd have dust on the sensor again. I've only got one lens for this Sony A1, so I only change the extender, put the extender on or off, but I've had dust issues. And I've got the mechanical shutter set up, so it comes across whenever I power the camera off, I still get the dust issue. So that's a great advantage of Olympus. They seem to have solved the dust problem. The extra image stabiliser you get on the Olympus is very noticeable too. It's eight stops versus five and a half stops. And I can see the difference. I can't handhold the Sony and take video. No way, I'm shaking all over the place. With this, I almost can. If I brace myself and get into a, a comfy position, I can handhold for video, which I've never been able to do that before either. Sleep mode, that's quite an important one for me. If you're using the Sony camera, and you have to have the camera go into sleep mode when you're sitting in a hide, you're waiting for a bird to come, else the battery would flatten. When the bird arrives and you press the button to activate the camera, it's quite a long wait before it becomes live. I haven't timed it, but possibly two seconds you've got to wait. The OM camera, one second, it's half the time, and that's, that's quite an important feature for me too. 
In terms of weight, the OM camera is uh, half a kilogram lighter. Plus I've still got the 300 F4 and if I put that on it's, it's going to be a very lightweight camera to carry about. The ergonomics of the two cameras, OM1 wins every time. I like the buttons, the feel of the buttons, the dials. On the Sony, I've, I've mentioned this before, I accidentally turn both the dials, the left and the right hand dial, frequently. I don't know how I do it because you have to press the centre button to, to do it, but I'm doing it accidentally and it's a constant and the buttons don't feel nearly as good as they do on the OM-1. We can talk about the menus too. I think the menus on the OM-1 are the best I've ever seen in any camera. Very easy to find things now and uh, the help menus are, are also very useful. The viewfinder on both cameras is excellent, really bright and sharp. If you used an Olympus M1X or an EM1 Mark II, which I, I had, you got used to the fact that the viewfinder was extremely dim and not very clear, but your eye became accustomed to it. If you look through the viewfinder on either of these cameras and then go back to an M1X, it's like looking through a Guinness bottle. It's a really dull viewfinder. These are really bright and sharp. Another big advantage the Sony has is it auto-focuses in slow motion video, 120 frames per second, it still auto-focuses. The OM camera doesn't do that. And that's a very important one for me because I'm shooting a lot of video now. And it would have been a crucial advantage, except for the fact that the autofocus doesn't work all that well in video mode in, in either camera. It's much worse than it is in stills mode. So I actually end up manually focusing all too often with, with either camera anyway, whether I'm in slow motion video or normal speed video. And you might be able to tell that as I was describing all that, there was one camera that I kept being more positive about than the other. So yes, I made my decision, but I just let it slowly evolve that whenever I was going out to take pictures, it was the OM-1 that I was taking with me. So I now have to sell the Sony. I'm gonna miss it. It was a wonderful camera, but I want to go back just to one system. There's one feature I didn't talk about at all, which is the Pro Capture on the OM-1. And this is probably the critical feature. That is probably the reason why I picked up the OM-1 every day. It's absolutely fantastic. I was a bit slow to get around to using it on the OM-1. I used it a lot on the earlier Olympus cameras, the M1X and the EM-1 Mark II, and it was fantastic then. But it's even more fantastic now because the, the, the OM-1 is capable of tracking and keeping a bird in focus after it's launched into flight, and the fact you've got 50 frames per second continuous focus, it makes that Pro Capture even more spectacular than it was before. Why all camera manufacturers haven't started to include this, I don't know. Someone told me it's on the Nikon Z9, and I'm sure Sony and Canon have, have got to catch up on it. It's wonderful. and. I was using it the other day for the first time and there was woodpeckers flying from one perch to another as they were chasing each other around and every time a, a, a woodpecker flew from a branch I got a sharp picture. Next to me was a friend, he was shooting with the Sony A1 and the 200 to 600 and he kept cursing because he was missing it. And eventually he did get it and he did deliberately put it small in the frame because of the, uh, the big frame size. But I was just getting it every time and I was quite enjoying teasing him by saying, easy, easy, because it is. It just makes bird in flight photography of small birds easy. Now, a lot of the time when we're photographing birds in flight, we're doing large birds, waterfowl, herons, uh, raptors, etc. It's a lot more difficult to do the small birds, but the Pro Capture makes it possible. Thanks for watching.